My name is Angelique Kirvin. I am the chairman and CEO of Clearline, and we are an electro-optic uh, system and subsystem house that focuses on technology that's used to detect threats against human life and, and defend against those threats. Uh, half of our technology is in the imaging array, uh, and half of our technology is in the laser fiber optics and in the area where the two converge, such as laser range finding and areas like that. I have a 25-year uh, career. Uh, I have worked, uh, I started my career in pure research uh, for Francis Crick, working uh, in Francis Crick's lab, uh, who won the Nobel for Genetics. Um, I finished a degree in ceramic engineering, uh, and I went to work for Bell Laboratories. I worked in development of Bell Laboratories, and, uh, and uh, worked on a committee that reported to the board of directors for new technology commercialization. And then, um, I have worked at, uh, in manufacturing at Hewlett Packard, AT&T Microelectronics, and NEC, um, and built a number of different businesses both inside of large corporations and outside uh, small independent businesses. What are the benefits of being a woman in the engineering field? Most of my career I've stood out. People notice me, so that, that, that's a good thing. Um, I, think, I think women lead differently. Uh, they're, you know, oftentimes they're more nurturing. I do notice that, you know, when my staff have problems, even personal problems, they'll come to a woman in a way they wouldn't come to a man. So I'm more in touch with what's driving my organization and the human factor. I think that that's very true. But I, but I also think um, the ability to multitask, the ability to track many technologies at the same time and to, and to bring them forward um, is very valuable. And I think, that, I think that's something that, that stereotypically women are very good at, although there are lots of men I know who are amazing at it as well. Can you talk about your experience at Bell Labs and what you learned there that you apply to your business now? There were a lot of amazing leaders. Um, I worked with John Mayo, who was the president at the time, Arno Penzias, one of the board members. I think both of them uh, had a real vision for a very large, bodacious, bodacious larger-than-life vision of kind of where we were going in the labs. And I think that, uh, that translated. I, I think I kind of, uh, I, I'm not sure they ever knew that they had that, but, but it took me years to look back and say, yeah, that's what was special. And they really knew how to pick the right people to get there. They really knew how to put the team together, the talent together to get there. I think the most important thing that Bell Labs taught me was about how to pick good talent. Um, and I think that the things we learned not to do was, um, how, you know, we weren't good at managing cost and, uh, and we, were, we were not good at commercializing some of the most amazing technology that came out of the labs. What are some of the ways to balance innovation, marketing, business needs, and national security? The constraints of ITAR and the, and the constraints of clearance and a number of other things are, are clearly your first objective in this industry. But beyond that, there are plenty of ways to share. Um, you can file patents for your intellectual property. You can make sure that everybody who gets it has a non-disclosure in place. You can share it with key groups and be very distinct about how you want that to translate. Uh, you, you certainly can't grow your technologies quickly without sharing it with a number of different people. I think what it comes to is, is a fully integrated team with all the key players at the table. And it doesn't have to take a huge amount of time. You know, you can have a 30-minute huddle, you know, once, once a month, you know, a one-hour huddle once a month that's got, you know, marketing, engineering, uh, business development, um, your, you know, somebody who represents the customer is probably business development in that case, your internal engineers, your internal inventor all in one place to discuss path forward. So you get everybody's input and you make good decisions. How is a mission statement useful and how specific should it be? You don't want to just tell your staff, our, our innovation task is to go here. You want to say, this is where we're going to go. This is what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to smell like. This is how we're going to get there. These are the technical specs we're going to hit. These are the requirements that we're going to exceed. And this is why it's going to be very successful in the market. And you need to paint that vision so that people are excited about what they're doing and have, kind of have a place to follow or lead to. What recommendations would you make for someone newly entering the field or taking on a new leadership role, particularly women? I think the first thing I would recommend is, is mentorship. Make sure you get yourself more than one mentor because each mentor is going to teach you something different and that you ask for help and that you say, hey, this is my objective, this is where I want to go and that you pick people who can take you there. That is really key. 
I think, you know, you definitely need to dress for the part, particularly if you're on the East Coast. So, you know, having a certain look, having a certain feel is really critical to women being successful in the workplace. Uh, and that, and that, that's a sad reality that it does make a difference. Uh, you are judged more harshly. Um, and, I, and I think, thirdly, um, you need to network. The most critical thing in everybody's career that I have seen that's been successful is the people they know. It's the relationships they have. It's not their, uh, their technical contribution is really key, but it's those relationships that really move you forward in your career.